What's up guys and thanks for joining yet another video and today we are doing something very special today We are ranking the Friday the 13th movies every Friday the 13th film now right off the bat I will say um, I did not include Freddy vs. Jason in this uh, ranking um, I know everybody else does that and they all add Freddy vs. Jason they think it's the cool thing to do but um, Freddy vs. Jason, to me, is more of a hybrid between A Nightmare on Elm Street and, uh, you know, Friday the 13th. So I don't think that it's necessarily fair to uh, add that in here because it's not Jason's movie. You know, it's not fully Jason's movie. It's, it's uh, also Freddy's movie. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing a top 11 uh, Friday the 13th films from the first one all the way to the 2009 remake and like I said not including uh, Freddy vs. Jason so just wanted to get that out there right before we start here um, I did recently pick up the Friday the 13th 8 movie collection if you guys have been watching this channel you've probably seen this uh, within the last few weeks I've been uh, talking about it and how I've been starting the series and watching through them this is the first time that I have basically watched all the Friday the 13th movies um, and mostly I did back to back to back to back uh, so really going into it I only really saw the 2009 remake and I saw uh, the first one and then bits and pieces of some of the other ones but I was never really able to identify which was which. So, yeah, so right off the bat, we can start with number 11 on this list, which is my least favorite Friday the 13th movie. I think it is actually a pretty horrible movie, um, and that's, f uh, what's the exact title of it? Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. Uh, this is my least favorite Friday the 13th movie because it, it feels like the filmmakers weren't really trying when they made this movie. It's all very basic. Half of it takes place on like a cruise ship where you have all these graduates celebrating on the ship and Jason is resurrected from the bottom of Crystal Lake yet again uh, in the beginning of the movie, which that's a pretty ridiculous scene. Uh, um in and of itself, but look, this movie is, it feels too long when it really even isn't that long. Uh, it's not scary, and it's just not that effective, and I thought it was kind of a task to get through. So that's why part eight is my number 11. So number 10, number 10 on my list is a film that I don't own on Blu-ray. I had to get a two film collection DVD set because these uh, these Blu-rays were a little pricey. Um, so number 10 for me is Friday the 13th, Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. Um, this is number 10 to me because... Again, it felt like a task to watch. It felt so recycled with the rest of the series. Um, I don't really think there's anything too memorable about it or cool about it. Sure, they add some mystical elements with the sword, and they try to give it a, a background story to where if, if you have the Voorhees blood or whatever, you're able to resurrect or uh, whatever, kill Jason, and you have to have this magic sword, and it's just, it's it's a little ridiculous, I think. Um, so I hate this movie just probably as equally as I do Jason Takes Manhattan, and I probably will never watch them again. Um, so yeah, so that's number 10 for me. Really forgettable movie. And what you'll notice is if you watch these movies like back to back to back to back, a lot of them feel exactly the same. There's nothing like unique or different about any of them. So that's not great. Um, some of them are uh, good, though. I think some of them can't stand alone. Uh, we'll talk about those a little later. So moving on to part, uh, or number nine, I should say, uh, we have... The, let me get the exact title here. Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning. Um, the, uh, yeah, uh, that's basically my reaction after I watched this movie. I was just like, um, Basically, Jason isn't even in this movie. It's basically like a 
a Jason impersonator because I guess it was a cop and his son was murdered at this at this halfway house or whatever and he's out for revenge and all the kid tried to do is give a chocolate bar. I, I don't know. The movie is a giant mess. They go for serious tones in this with the uh, Corey Feldman character who is now an adult in this. Um, he has he's turned into uh, a silent assassin almost. But then when he comes face to face with Jason, he he has a hard time. Uh, when he gets into fights with other people, he he takes them out easily uh, and intimidates them. But yeah, look, this movie to me was just again forgettable. It really doesn't even have Jason in it. It's just a movie that. I don't really know what they were thinking when they made. Uh, so moving on to number eight is Friday the 13th Part 3, 3D. Now, I did not watch this in 3D. Uh, I think I did have the option to do so, but, I mean, I, I didn't just because, I don't know, wasn't in the mood for it. But listen, Friday the 13th Part 3, uh, I believe this is the one where um, the girl was she she ran into the woods or something and she had an encounter with Jason but I don't think she knew it was Jason and she was able to escape which is never really explained how she escaped um which she does and basically she has an encounter with him again at the end of it um and he I believe this is the uh, one of the only Friday the 13th movies in full widescreen as well. Uh, so that was... I mean, the cinematography was was good. Um, but it's a lot of the same. A lot of forgettable characters and just nothing really too, too great or too hot about it. So moving on to number seven is the newest entry in the series. It's Friday the 13th of 2009... Uh, remake. Um, this movie, I actually just rewatched it earlier today. And what I could tell you about it is it is very bland to me. None of the characters are likable. They are all cliched. They all feel like they are inanimate objects just moving through this script just to be killed off. You basically just go through the motions in this movie. The only thing I really like about it is Jason himself and his physicality, the way he moves and how he's very uh, precise when he's like throwing axes and uh, all this. I don't know. I, I liked Jason in the film, but everything else, I mean, it, it turns into a complete porno at one point. Uh, so, I mean, it was just a... I, I, I don't know what... Some of the decisions they made with this movie was a little weird, especially all the ridiculous, obscene nudity and sex scenes. Uh, if you've seen this movie, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, yeah. So this is number seven. I also like the score as well. I think it was done by um, Steve Jablonski. I could be wrong. But... Uh... Yeah, Steve Jablonski did the score. He also did a lot of the Transformers movies. So, yeah, uh, that's why part the the 2009 remake is number seven. Okay, so moving on to number six is a movie that is probably lower on a lot of other people's lists. Uh, but for me, I have it at six because it is a very fun, entertaining movie. Even though it doesn't necessarily feel like a Friday the 13th film, it feels more like a sci-fi film. And that is Jason X, um, the tenth installment in the series. And honestly, it, it felt kind of fresh, and it felt kind of different. This is the tenth movie in the series. What did you expect? Did you want more of the same? I mean, with part nine, it was just spiral, spiraling into a, a pit of despair. So going into Jason X, I was like, what, what is this going to be? Um, now, I will admit, this mask he gets in like the last 10, 15 minutes of the movie, when he's resurrected again by this machine that fixes your body and all this, uh, the suit that he gets, it, it feels like he's like a, a walking like robot 
Almost. Like, if you guys seen the first Thor movie, there's that big robot that's terrorizing the town at the end of it. That's kind of what he looks like a little bit. It's kind of what he reminded me of. Uh, it, it does not feel like a Friday the 13th movie, but it does feel like a kind of a cool sci-fi movie. A lot of the characters are a lot more interesting. Um, so, yeah, this movie's number six, and I will... You know, definitely say, yeah, the CGI in this movie is atrocious. Um, but other than that, I was I was into it. I, I thought it was okay. I don't think it was great. I don't even think it was all that good. I thought it was just fine. Like, as a Friday the 13th movie, it fails. But as, like, a fun slasher sci-fi movie, it's actually not horrible. But the effects are one of the worst parts about it. So, moving on to number five, we have part four. Uh, Friday the 13th, the final chapter, uh, which is the one that does have Corey Feldman in it um, and other characters as well. And I did think this movie was interesting. I thought it was entertaining. I liked the family aspect with uh, Corey Feldman, his sister, and his mother. Uh, I did kind of enjoy that. I think some of the other characters that are in this uh, are funny, and uh, they they have their quirks. They have their moments. Um, there's a nerd, I, I guess, kind of like a nerd or whatever. He's uh, very shy, very socially awkward, and he uh, doesn't have much confidence in himself. And later on in the movie, he's able to get a little bit of that confidence back. Uh, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. But I, I did I did really like part four. I thought it was good. The ending, I thought, was kind of interesting and kind of weird how Corey Feldman shaves his head. And I, I think they put, like, black makeup around his eyes. Um and he basically turns into a murdering psychopath, which is something that we talk about in uh, part five, which we talked about earlier, which I did not care for when he's older. But yeah, part four, the final chapter, uh, I, I thought it was all right. I thought it was definitely one of the better films in the series. So moving on to number four on this list, uh, we actually have the first Friday the 13th, uh, part one, the on-cut, killer cut, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is part... This is number four for me because, look, it's the first in the series they actually begin to set up some kind of lore and story, particularly in the last, like, 20 minutes of the movie with Jason's mother. But I thought that was kind of an interesting take. You know, it's actually not Jason. It's the mother that's getting revenge for her son who's actually not even dead and witnesses his mother die. We don't see that in this movie, but... We, we hear about that in uh, some later films, but yeah, I really like the, uh, the, the, the feel of this. And Kevin Bacon's in this movie. I mean, everything is better with a little bit of bacon. You know, so that's why part one is number four for me. So moving on to the third spot in this rankings list is, uh, might be a surprise to some of you, but it's Friday the 13th part seven, The New Blood. That's right. This is number three for me. I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was actually pretty cool uh, how they brought a girl with like telekinesis abilities uh, to to face off against Jason. I thought that was really cool and a really interesting way to take it, uh, which didn't feel recycled. It felt kind of new and kind of fresh. Uh, I thought the acting was okay, especially by the, the girl who did have these telekinesis abilities. But look, I think that aspect of it and her doctor who was kind of a sneak and he was doing some under the table stuff. But look, part seven, is it a great movie? No, but it is a fun movie. And I actually think it is kind of entertaining, especially when she's doing all her telekinesis stuff and she's going off against Jason. I was a big fan of that. So I like that. Number three for me. Okay, so moving on to number two on this list is actually probably a surprise to a lot of you that this movie is so high. But it's Friday the 13th. Uh, part two. Part two for me is a movie that I liked a lot more than the first one. I actually did watch these back to back, and I just thought the cast was better. The cast was bigger. Uh, you actually got a little more lore into the Jason character himself and how he did watch his mother uh, get beheaded and ha now how he's kind of taking revenge for, for her and how he's living in the woods and like eating off animals and like becoming this on humanly kind of creature. I did really like that. I did really enjoy that aspect of it. Um, and as I did mention, the cast is better. I do think that the final girl that survives in this, she's one of the counselors, how she goes off against Jason at the end of it and how she kind of pretends that she's the mother and that final 
one of the final scenes, um, she kind of manipulates Jason to believe that for a little bit. I don't know. I, I actually thought it was pretty good, and it's one of the Friday the 13th movies that I could see myself re-watching. Now, number one on this list is obviously the only one left, and it's the one that I probably see myself re-watching the most. It is uh, Friday the 13th, Part 6, Jason Lives. This movie, to me was so fun and they knew the filmmakers knew what they were doing here and they they got the tone just right this wasn't too serious it didn't take itself too seriously but it was kind of funny at the same time you got some some paintball competitions going on in the forest and jason's going around you got some uh weird music with one of the older guys that's playing uh the paintball and he's really serious about it what he's doing uh the kills were good i thought it was really well paced i thought it was really well uh really entertaining especially the end of the movie the climax when uh, the older version of Corey Feldman's character, who's a lot better in this than he was in A New Beginning. I like this take on the character a lot more uh, when he's in the uh, the, the rowboat in, in the lake and he sets the lake on fire around the boat to trap Jason. I did really like that. I was into it. Uh, and also, look, the relationship vibe in this movie with the girl that he meets when he's in the prison cell, it doesn't really work. But look, for what they're going for in this movie, I thought it was pretty good. The kills were pretty good as well. I thought the opening scene where he's brought back to life by the, the rod through his chest and the lightning comes down, I just thought it was really visually entertaining. And look, that's why Jason Lives is number one for me. So yeah, guys, that's my rankings for the Friday the 13th movies. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Come on back for a whole bunch of other reviews. I'm also doing like a Christopher Nolan series right now. I'll be reviewing in Inception next, so there is a playlist, a Christopher Nolan playlist up now. Uh, you could check that out. Um, yeah, so guys, you could follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. The links to those are in the description of this video, and that's about it for me. So guys, again, thank you so much for watching this one, and until next time, over and out.